Hello again everyone. In today's video, we are going to revisit permissions. We've already gone over permissions in video number nine. So if you haven't already seen video nine, I highly suggest that you watch that one first. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to understand the numerical value of permissions. And in video number nine, we took a introduction look at permissions. So we're gonna get a little bit more advanced in this video. It's not too bad though. So in this video, you'll understand the numerical value of permissions. And that's definitely an important thing to know. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here in my terminal, I have a brand new Ubuntu instance I created on Linode because I wanted a clean instance for the purposes of this video. I didn't want to change permissions on my actual files and folders. But it doesn't really matter what you're using here because this is pretty much the same across all Linux distributions. And what I did was I created a folder and a text file called documents and text file respectively. So what I'm gonna do is, again, show you how to understand the numerical value of permissions. But as a quick refresher, when you see the permission string, which is here on the left, which is what you get when you use ls-l. The first character here is either a D or a hyphen, and yes, there could, other be, there could be other things here, but we're not gonna get into that. Primarily, it's gonna be D for directory or a hyphen for file. And then from there, we have three groups of three. So this is group one, this is group two, and this is group three. And the individual bits mean read, write, and execute accordingly. And a bit can either be on or off. So this R, if it's on, will be the R. So we see that it is on. If it was off, the R would become a hyphen. The same for the other characters. You can't have a W here or X here. It's read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. That's all it can be. It's either it's on or it's off. Again, watch video nine if that confuses you because you should have already gone through that video, in which case that would probably make sense. So each of these bits actually have a numerical value. So for example, we have R, which again stands for read. That has a numerical value of four. W, which stands for write, has a numerical value of two. X, which is short for execute, has a numerical value of one. So four, two, one, corresponds to read, write, and execute, just as you see here. So that might look kind of confusing, but how does that look in practice? I think by seeing it in practice, you'll understand it a bit better. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the chmod command, which again, we went over in video nine, but basically that command is going to allow us to change permissions. And what I'm gonna do is change the permissions of text file. So what I'm gonna do now is do 400, and then what I wanna change permissions on again is text file. What do you think is going to happen? Let's go ahead and find out. So chmod 400 text file. We have read because read is worth four, as I mentioned earlier, and zero, zero, as you can see, means pretty much nothing. So for each of the last groups of three, so group one, group two, and group three, which is user, group, and other respectively, these actually correspond to that same gr uh, group of three as well. So four here that I changed it to is user, this zero is group, and this zero is other. So each of these numbers corresponds to one of the last three groups in the permission string. So by giving it a value of 400, we're basically saying that the user section, which is actually right here, is worth a value of four. The other two sections, here and here, are both worth zero. So for example, if I was to do 444, four, that means everybody has read. If I was to do let's say zero, four, zero, we can see that group has read, but no other section has that. So that's kind of weird. You probably won't see that in the real world, but you know, you can do it. Much the same way that I could simply do zero, zero, four, which gives 
other read access, but not the owner of the group. Again, a weird permission, but that's just to show you how that corresponds, because every time I move the value of 4 over, the read value also gets moved over, as you see. So similarly, if I was to change it to 200, we can see that the owning user has write permission. And then if I change that to 020, we see write moved over to the next section. And then again, that moved right over to the last section. As I mentioned, two is a numerical value for right. So how do you give each field more than just one thing? Well, it's simple. So we could do chmod 700 text file. Let's see what that does. That gave user read, write, and execute. User is the first field here corresponds to the second field, or the first field in the set of three. The first field, of course, designates directory or file. Seven is what you get when you add four, two, and one, the three values you could possibly have. So if you were to give it, for example, six, that gives it just read and write. That's because the execute bit is worth one. We took that away. Read is worth four, write is worth two, 4 plus 2 is 6. That's how we got that. We could do the same thing and do, let's just say, 655. Let's see what that gives us. So that's kind of interesting. It gives user read and write, group read and execute, and other read and execute. Well, that's kind of, kind of weird. We probably wouldn't want that. But what we could do 644, which is probably something you're more likely to see in the real world, gives the owner read and write, the group read, and other read as well. That basically means everybody can read this file, but only the owning user can make changes to it or write to it because we gave the owner six, which is basically four read and write two added together. And then we gave group and other for, which is read, to come up with this permission string right here. Now I mentioned in video number nine that execute in a directory means something different than file. If it's a file with the execute bit, that means you can run it as a program. We can see here that the folder has execute bit here. That's required to actually change directory into that directory but we can modify the permissions of the documents directory the same way. So chmod 755 against the documents directory. And again, the command we entered was this one. This basically means that everybody can read the contents of the directory and go inside the directory, but only the owner is able to change the contents of that directory. The owner has write permission if we wanted everybody in the world to have access, full access, 777 basically highlights it in green. That's not always going to happen. That's just a shell customization, but you can see that that filled in every single permission bit. We could do the same thing to the text file. And we can see the text file has all the bits set as well. So seven gives it everything for that field so now we have a folder and a file that has everything turned on. And to take it away, we could simply do this. Which basically took that away from other. We do the same thing to documents. And the same thing happened to documents. So again, read equals four, write equals two, execute equals one. You can add these up any way you'd like, put the value where you'd like to change the appropriate permission for, and that'll give you the numerical value of that permission, which might be useful to you if you prefer that method or if that works better for your use case. Now you should actually be able to change permission via number as well. So I know that was a relatively simple video, guys, but 
In the original video when we went over permissions, that one was already going on kind of long. And I wanted to go ahead and revisit this in another video, which I finally had a chance to do in this one. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I'm going to be creating some new tutorials in this series. I'll be editing some coming up here pretty soon. Should have them uploaded very soon. So stay tuned and there's going to be definitely some more videos in this series. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.